flat slab design. In this tutorial, we will show the design of reinforced concrete flat slabs. Our design will be done for a typical floor slab in the concrete building shown. And although this design will be for gravity loads only, ETABS can perform analysis and design for little loads if needed. The building we are modeling is an office structure. Basement plus 12 stories tall with base varying in width from 7 meter to 5 meter. The structure system consists of concrete beams and column on the perimeter. Concrete walls in the interior that form the elevator core. Concrete columns and elevator cores supporting gravity loads. And 200 thick concrete slab for the floors. The units we will use will be SI as shown here. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on the design of the typical office floors, story 12 and below. Story 13 which is the roof and has different loading will not be included in the current design. Since we will not be designing the roof, we can remove story 13 from our 3D view. We can verify our slab property by going to the model explorer or define section properties slab section. Note that the slab material is 4000 psi which is equal to 27.58 newton per mm square concrete and that the thickness is indeed set to 200 mm. In a similar manner we can also review our rebar material and we will use A615 grade 60 reinforcing. We now move on to the load patterns. Pattern we see that currently some load patterns are defined. A day load with a self weight multiplier of 1 and a live load with no self weight multiplier. To these two we will add the third super dead. To account for superimposed dead loads such as mechanical systems in non structural system walls. Next, we will assign the floor loads. We switch our selection option to similar stories so that when we assign loads to the 12th floor, the same loads will be applied to all floor below. We click on the 12th floor in the plan view and note that 12 shells are selected for 12 floors. Now go to define menu, set in the farm load sets. And define here live load and super dead loads and assign load of 2.4 kN per meter square. It will be in the gravity direction and super dead load of 0.479 kN per meter square. Now close this for As a general rule, it is a good idea to include pedal type facts in our analysis. So we will specify that now. We are going to use an iterative method based on combination of all gravity loads. With all of our loads now assigned, we will do a quick review of our load cases. Note that P delta is included in the load case analysis. Next, we will add the items needed in the model for concrete slab design. 
we will change to plan v only ETAPs can perform slab design using either the traditional design strips where forces are integrated across a way to determine the reinforcing or FEM where the required reinforcing area is calculated on element by element basis. We will show both. To add the design stripes, we may draw them like other land type objects including specifying values using a properties of object box or right click on the strip which brings up the strip object information form however in this tutorial we are going to use the automated scheme meetups provides for the design strips layout that can be found under the edit menu we will specify the layout for our top floor floor 12 and the strips and the strips will be added along the grid lines make sure to check the include middle strip options if you are doing a post tension slab you would probably leave this option unchecked the first strips that we will add will be added in the x direction for layer a Typically, there are two principal layer directions. We will let the program automatically determine the stripes widths. Although the stripes extends beyond the slab, they will be ignored by the program when integrating the forces and determining reinforcing. Now, we will add the design stripes in the Y directions which will be for layer B again information about a design step may be obtained by right clicking and in the geometry tab we can review the start and ending words that the program has calculated using the auto width options we can also adjust how the strips are displayed using the sit display options command Maybe we want to show only strips A and the strip width. Remember that we added the design steps to story 12 only. If we skip down a level, note that no design steps are shown on story level. We can easily add the same design steps to all the similar floors by using the select by the object commands, highlighting both layer A and B. selecting and then going to the replicate command we will replicate at story 11 down to story 1 cropped now If we skip down through the level, note that design strips have been added. Now we may start the analysis. We will shut off the model analysis cases as we are not doing any dynamic analysis or any other analysis. With the analysis complete, we will review the setting for our concrete slab design. We start by viewing our design preferences. For this design, we are going to use the ACI 318-14 code.
and the cover tab note the clear cover and for this slab we are going to switch the preferred bar size to 14 mm this is the bar size the program will use when reporting reinforcing requirements note it changes to red to indicate the value has been altered also note that layer b will be the inner layer of reinforcing Switching to the undeformed shape and moving to floor 12. If we select a design strap and then go to the design overrides command, we can see the particulars for the selected strip. In this case, it is an A layer strip and, and the A615 grid 60 rebar previously review will be used. We could also override the cover to use. But we will leave it as specified in the preferences. We could also reduce the live load using in the design if so desired. If we take a look at the design combinations, we see that the form is currently bunk. This is because the program will automatically generate the combinations. When the design is run, we will check this again after the design is complete. When performing concrete slab design in a tabs, the user must explicitly select which story should be designed. In this case, we will design only story 12, as the other floors are similar. This can provide not only computational efficiency of entire buildings, but can significantly reduce output, as slab design can generate very large amounts of data. We are now ready to start the design. What is displayed is the area of reinforcement required on a per unit width basis. top and bottom in the A layer design strips. Note the value changes as you scroll along. Also note that the extent of the top and bottom bars is indicated with blue lines. We can change the display by going to display flexural design command. Here we are asking for the result using strips. And since we have no post running, Enveloping in the display type option simply means strength design and it is flexural reinforcing needed to satisfy strength design that we are displaying. However, if we wanted to additionally impose code minimums, we could do so by checking the impose minimum reinforcing checkbox. Switching to layer B and then unchecking the top rebar we will ask for the total rebar to be shown just for the bottom rebar. Switching back to layer A, we will ask for reinforcing to be shown in terms of 14 mm bars. We can switch off the enveloping and now only the rebar required of our typical if desired. If you right click on a design strip, design details for the strip are displayed. Although, all the slab reinforcing shown so far has used for the design strips. Reinforcing may also be calculated directly from the finite element forces. We do this by selecting finite element based as a design basis. Here, reinforcing directions refer to the local axis of the slab object. We will select bottom rebar in the one direction. 
which for our model is the same as the x axis. Running the cursor over the model display the reinforcing area per unit width. We can also show reinforcing about the specified value. The finite element method design basis provides the user with the powerful visual indications of how to reinforce and should be distributed. ETABS also automates the checking of punching shear. This punching shear is done in the previous videos. You can refer to that. Returning to the concrete slab design menu, once more we will now revisit the design combination form. Note that design combinations have been created. We can quickly review the combinations generated by the program, if so desired. We can also generate a report for our slab design results. As a last step, uh, we will take a look at a summary table for our concrete slab design. Note that it says flexor and shear although up to this point. We have been primarily concerned with flexor reinforcement in the slab as shown here in this table. It helps also perform shear design for slabs and the shear design result and reinforcement are available here. This concludes this tutorial and reinforce concrete slab design in your tabs. Subscribe the channel for future videos. It will help you a lot.